Hi gang, for Wall Street Media, I'm Doug, and I'm going to help you make money in the stock market with information you won't find anywhere else, and you can't find it anywhere else. Um, we got up early this morning, bright and early, and some of us were running around yesterday uh, setting up for this. We're doing 15 rooms at a time today over at the Rodman and Renshaw conference, and we're bringing you the highlights of that. Um, what, Jeremy, what is that, RRSH? Okay, if you want to see the whole thing, you can go to www wsw.com slash webcast slash rrshq and then the numbers one four for 14 and you can see this we're, we're going to have we've got i don't know hundreds of, of half hours of ceos there i'm going to bring you some highlights here Bef most of these are going to be biotech before i start on this what i'd like to tell you is that this is a magical time for biotechnology okay and this isn't going to be like a fluke like your real estate, if you flipped real estate, now it's worth nothing, and now boo-hoo, right? <laughs> you know, real estate isn't the greatest thing since the history of, since sliced bread, okay? And it's not like dot-com where I did go to all the parties, okay, and I enjoyed their champagne, and I loved hearing I was in a club they wouldn't let Madonna in last night because the dot-com guys were there. But the, none of that was sustainable, okay? And biotechnology is getting so close to so many permanent, unbelievable, life-changing, life-altering discoveries. And I really think that this is a permanent change. Like if Ford electric cars ever <laughs> gets into and, and moves forward into actual electric cars. I've been whispering to them, I know we have someone in Dearborn that watches every day. Please go knock on someone's door, put a post-it and say, this lunatic in Manhattan is screaming and saying, electric cars. That's what you need. You don't need a bailout to make more junky old gas engines. Anyhow, biotechnology is going to be the next big breakthrough, okay? Detroit's crumbling and they're not going to make electric cars like I've been whispering to them now for five years, right? Thomas Friedman, I'm reading his latest book, The World is Flat, and he says, he whispered to the Chinese, uh, he was at a big conference in China for all the manufacturers, right? And these are the tough guys that fought their way to the top of the pile and started the car companies. And he said, do you know something, guys? It's wonderful. America is, has led you in information technology, let, was the first on the moon, and we're going to be the first with electric cars and to have, have a clean and green environment, and we'll be the innovators of that. And he said the room went quiet, man. And he's, he said that was the big revolution. But I, I, I have to tell you, Mr. Friedman, you're brilliant, and I love the world is flat, but I think you're a little early on this, and I think we're five years away if everything if god smiles on us and i think we're probably 10 years away until you see anything meaningful in electric cars because these guys have been sitting on their ass doing nothing for 50 years i think we're one year away from seeing some change in biotechnology and i saw some disturbing activity in the market today there was no it was like there is a recession, there isn't a recession. There is a recession, there isn't a recession. We've been playing that game for three weeks now, right? And everyone blamed it on the election, and now the election's over and done with, right? Um, and we're still playing that game. And over the weekend, China called their economic minister back, and he told them, and, and they told him, come up with something to change it, and he did, right? In one day, God bless them. What a fabulous society. But this, and all the European and Asian markets are up 5 and 6 and 7% today. And we had German Mike, my buddy here, my partner, right, running around this morning. He didn't have a chance to see the market. And he got back from the conference and getting everything set up, you know. And he says, oh, my God, I thought you told me all the markets were up 5 or 6% because they're all down, you know, now. And, and that, that, that's not very rational, right? There was a recession or there wasn't a recession. What China did was going to help or didn't help. Right? And I think you're going to see an awful lot of this kind, kind of volatility and irrational behavior in the market. But I'm going to tell you, uh, you can profit from some of the irrational behavior in the market. Because do you know what? Some of the good companies, biotechnology, is finally moving forward and getting into breakthrough stages. Okay, And they're doing beautiful, wonderful things that are going to treat horrible, horrible diseases and conditions. And they're in phase two and phase three. You know, we're not talking about one guy in, in a basement and he saw something on a microscope that he thinks might help somebody at some point a thousand years from now. We're talking about these guys, they have phase one, phase two, phase three. They submit to the FDA, they get approved, they don't get approved. They get approved. You own their stock, whoo, you made a lot of money. Depending on the disease, the condition, the size of it, who they partner with, you, you, can, you can make tenfold in your money. Now, to invest in biotechnology, what you need to do is have a basket of these. 
Don't put all of your money into one biotech stock. There are biotech stocks that I think the world of their management, but I don't have anywhere near all my money in any one of these biotech stocks. The way to invest in biotechs is pretend you're your own venture capitalist and put, listen for a good story, look at the management, see what you think of them, right? Do they seem smart? Do they seem trustworthy? Do, or is, is what they are saying, does it make sense to you? If it does, then think about adding them to a basket of, of them. Now, it depends how optimistic you are, how, how much risk you can tolerate, that kind of a thing, right? And that's going to vary for every one of you, okay? I have uh, quite a bit right now in Aspen Biotech, which is making a test that can tell whether or not your appendix have burst. I had no idea this was such a big problem in the United States, except it's gigantic, right? And they, they, you have to go to their website and take a look at them or, or look at the information because I get the numbers wrong and, and I shouldn't misrepresent them. But it's something like 100,000 Americans a year are misdiagnosed and either have the appendix operation and shouldn't or are sent home and should have had it because they did burst. And uh, these guys, because there's no test. So they, you can walk in and you have a stomach problem. Anyhow, you, you, you end up with a surgery, or you walk in with a stomach problem, they give you some Pepto-Bismol, and they send you home, and you end up with serious complications. Once they burst, they can pollute your other organs. Aspen Bio, I love their chairman, Greg. Super, super wonderful guy, a guy I trust. And that's what you're doing, is you're trusting them with your money. And he's a guy I trust with my money. I think he's very far along on this test. And I think, he's, as he told me, I've got my nose to the grindstone, Doug. Now, we're going, to be, we're going to be presenting them in the next week or two, and I'll bring you highlights of the latest news. And I have my money in with them. I trust them. I'm going to tell you very shortly some highlights from what we did this morning at Rodman and Renshaw. But... I want you to think about this and, and don't get too wrapped up. They're very close, and I think this is going to be a revolution that nobody sees coming, and those are the beautiful revolutions to be part of, guys, because you can really profit, especially when people are fleeing all the stocks. If you're selective and you pick the right biotechs right, and have the right basket, you need one winner, two winners, three winners, and, and you're going to hit it out of the park. I'll give you my mailing address later so that you can send checks. Um, the first one that we had today was the CEO of Idea Pharmaceuticals, the ticker's IDRA. He discusses the company's focus on compounds that mimic DNA and bacteria for use as a cancer treatment, including targeting hepatitis C. Cancer, hepatitis C. Worth a listen. Go to the URL that I told you. Listen to the whole thing. Do your own research. I'm bringing you some highlights and some good starting points. The CEO and president of Cleveland Biolabs, their ticker CBLI, spoke about two new drugs, Protectin, which protects healthy tissues from acute radiation syndrome and side effects of cancer treatment, and Curaxins, which kills tumor cells. Both are in trials. Follow-ups will begin in 2009. The COO of Omrix Biopharmaceuticals, OMRI, has five new products, two in the U.S. and three in Israel, for the prevention and treatment of viral threats and infectious diseases. Guys, I had two surgeries in August, right, minor little surgeries, and they were so freaked out. And I, I'm in Manhattan, and I was at the fanciest hospital in Manhattan, and they were so freaked out about the possibility of me getting infection, and, like an infection they can't treat. Something worth looking into. The next one. President and CEO of Sinta Pharmaceuticals talked to us this morning. SNTA spoke about a Cleskimol, an anti-cancer drug, in its thir third phase. Phase three, guys, primary endpoint data and NDA approvals expected in early 2009. We're getting close. This, you really need to put your nose to the grindstone. This isn't dot-com emptiness. This is we're getting close. The president and CEO of Newcrist Pharmaceuticals, NCST, spoke about the company's agreement with Smith and, Nephew, Smith and Nephew for wound care management. Smith and Nephew make an awful lot of cool things. I think they made uh, the machine that I had that did ultrasound on my foot to try to heal. I didn't even know they made such a thing, and, and they gave me that, right? There's an awful lot of stuff out there, guys, that's either already out there or coming. Uh, Richard Taney, the president and CEO of Delcath Systems, DCTH, spoke about Percutaneous hepatic perfusion, PHP technology, a treatment of melanoma and other liver cancers, which is in phase three trial and will be completed in 2009. Guys, phase three is the last thing they do before they do the NDA, which is a new drug application. Uh, the last note that we have for you here is Paul E. Freeman, the CEO of Neurobiological Technologies, the ticker's NTII, discusses, whew, they must stay up late thinking of these. 
uh, Zericept, which is in phase three, Vipramex, which is in phase, fr phase three, and he also talks about NTI's phase three trial and menatine for Alzheimer's. Now, NTII made a bunch of money in, in the past. That was a company that Paul Allen, one of the co-founders of Microsoft, came and put a big infusion in before. Um, I made a bunch of money. They're back down. Right, their, their last share trade was 70 cents, right? I think I bought them at 56 cents and sold them at $5. That was in uh, uh, the last stage. This was eight or nine years ago, right? Um, these guys are all getting close. When you hear phase three, <clears throat> they're getting close, right? This is no longer just uh, one thing in a microscope and another thing on a microscope. And I really think you should have a basket of biotechs, but do your own research, decide how much risk you have, don't put too much into any of them and pick out a handful of them, whether that's six or ten, depends how much of an investor you are, and see what happens with these and pick the best ones that sound like they make the most sense and that you trust them the most. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back with some more notes later. You can come and see everything that we do at wallstreetmedia.com or wsmco.com.